Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is about Go and uh, one of some of the cool projects in the Go programming language. Um, talking about code generation. Um, think of like uh, Open API or like Swagger type things that you take a a smaller uh, definition of something and you build out all the scaffolding um, for the code. And what that allows you to do is have like very consistent. Um, very consistently manageable code as far as like documentation and like um, uniformity um, and obviously speed of development. Um, I thought I was gonna do a bunch of things, but I was given 45 minutes, so I'm gonna do one tool because I was gonna do like Goa and gRPC, which is Google's RPC implementation. Um, but uh, there's no way I could. I mean, I can give a brief overview of what those are, but I can't talk about. You know, I can't give examples and go deep into what those are in 45 minutes. So, um, what I'm going to talk about today is Cobra. I don't know, is anyone familiar with Cobra? One, two, cool. So, Cobra is two things. Cobra is a uh, code generation tool and a library. You don't need to use both, um, but the cool part about the, the generation tool is that it, it'll build out the, uh, all the source files, the scaffolding, the sort of template of the um, code and then you just apply your business logic, like small, smaller bits of business logic to that. So, um, but I will, I, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, Goa and uh, QGO and gRPC. So Goa is for uh, generating REST APIs. Um, basically there's a, a Go specific DSL which you write and then Go will actually build all of the server side infrastructure based on how you define your services. So it's a much simpler like you know, you'll define 20 lines of code, and then you run uh, uh, Go a generate. I don't remember what it is. Go a design generate. Anyway, uh, Go a gen. Yeah. So Go a gen builds out all the API code as far as like the HTTP handlers. Like um, it also will build a JavaScript client. So all those things are uniform in that way. So like your JavaScript client matches up exactly with how your API is, and also will build you a Swagger. Um, a, uh, swagger files and sort of how, um, uh, yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't use Swagger except to do documentation and provide like an external use of it. Um, and then a CLI. So basically, you, you define your, using the DSL, you define your, your service. And then when you generate the code, you get all these things. They're exactly the same. The documentation is all there. Um, and then from that, you just add your business logic, um, add your business logic to the APIs. You don't worry about the routing. You don't worry about building a separate CLI tool. You don't worry about the JavaScript client as much. You just add a little bit of business logic, and all the rest is done. And it's clean, and it's easier to maintain over time because um, you don't have uh, you don't have one API looking like this that one person wrote, one API that looks like this one another person wrote. And so the performance is, is more uniform as well. Um, so Hugo is a uh, static website generator. Actually, the same guy that wrote Cobra and a bunch of other tools works at Google um, wrote Hugo. It's kind of cool if you just want to throw up a quick static page with some, you know, like some basic templates and things like that. Um, you can just generate sites from the command line. Um, and, uh, Actually, it comes with a server as well, like a daemon. So if you want to run a daemon and you didn't want to put out the code to serve on a site, uh, you can actually run the daemon like in a container or whatnot. Um, and then gRPC, so that's Google's, uh, Google's RPC client. So it's um, maybe a little more robust than a REST API. Um, it, it has a client and server model. So with gRPC, you can, t you can create um, kind of similar as Goa. You create a spec. And then you build out the, you create the protocol buffers, and you create a spec, and then you can build out the, the server side code as well. Um, so it's like gRPC is a bit faster and tighter than REST, but REST is ubiquitous because it works easily across the web, right? So like HTTP JSON is kind of like the uni universal language. Um, so the uh, if you want to get this on GitHub, or you want to ask me any questions. It's here, github.com slash kbfastcat slash go dash generate. Um, Are the slides there too? The slides? This is all marked down. I don't, I don't have, this is marked down. 
this right here. So as far as I don't have separate slides, um, I just have the code in, in the markdown. So um, that's what all the tor tutorials done in. It's in the repo. Okay. Yep. And it's all MIT, so you can do whatever you want with it. Except launch a nuclear attack. Yeah, you probably couldn't do that. It's not quite that Shouldn't sophisticated. Do that. <laughs> At least not on Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Because I'm getting my hair done on Tuesday. <laughs> well, that's an old joke. Yeah, well, I'm old. <laughs> that's an old joke by an old president. No old jokes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so Cobra is what um, is what is used for uh, Docker and Kubernetes, uh, the command line bits, uh, etcd. There's a bunch of other ones. Um, it's it's pretty popular in like the DevOpsy sort of SRE role. Um, it's a, well, I'd say, I think Go in general is pretty popular in the in the DevOps arena. So let's see. So out of the box, the nice things that Cobra provides you are um, you can easily create subcommands and you can remap those subcommands. So if you don't like sort of the chain of how your commands are lining up, you can easily just associate it with another parent or the, the top level itself. You don't have to re-implement anything. Um, POSIX uh, compliant flag, so you know short versions and long versions. Like if you want to you want to show somebody how to do something, use the long version so they understand what you're doing, or if you're doing it yourself and you already know what the flags are, you've got the short versions. Um, let's see. Uh, the generation tool itself is Cobra init, so oh, let's do. I see that? Should I move it up some? Let's say we wanted a new CLI tool called Linux Fest Northwest CLI. It's Cobra init. Um, and that will use the configuration I have under uh, cobra.yaml. And so if I go into there, we see it built the, the license, it built the main file, and it built the first uh, root command. Um, root is where all the other subcommand, all the other commands are uh, linked to. Let's see, put my name in there, MIT license. Um, the, uh, and then, so basically, so we've got our, our initial scaffolding. So now if we want to add, let's say we want to add a command to that, we just do Cobra add, I don't know, let's say test. So that builds test.go. And so you see that there. So that's, instead of like, you know, like if you were doing this from scratch, and I'll, I'll get into why this is like uh, really useful. It's it's generating a number of different things. Um, it's generating all all this all the uh, type information about the, the the command line. It's generating all the helper functions. So like if you're doing this from scratch, you're like, okay, how 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 am I going to do the flags? How am I going to do the helper functions? How am I going to do you know sub commands and like all the things you want to do from scratch? This will provide you like easily out of the box with just a couple of quick commands. You can have the start of your your CLI tool. And one of the cool things about Go is that you can cross compile. I can cross compile on this. I can cross compile a Windows binary or a Mac binary or FreeBSD without having to leave my machine just with two environment variables. So um, that's one of my uh, favorite features, especially like working in SRE space. You have some people that are on Windows and some people are on Mac and some people prefer Linux. So you can quickly build them binaries. You don't have to install a different build, set of build tools or anything. Um, and it's all it's all native, so the the run times are specific to each platform, but the code the code works on all of them. Um, so let's take a look at what I did for here. So what I did for here is like a super simple example. I don't need that. Um, all of the commands are basically um, assigned as variables. So root command has, um, root command is um, where everything starts. There's different um, on the type. So Cobra command and go Cobra, this is a type. Um, and 
there are a bunch of different um, members of that type, and they all define how the behavior of the command is. So this short and this long applies to how the um, how the help is generated. So when you run a command, you'll get certain a certain usage. So like that, I've got certain. It'll tell me what the available commands are um, and help usage. So you can do help usage on on pull. So basically, what I what I did for this is I just created a really super simple API that just reaches out to LinuxFest Northwest website, pulls down the HTML. Another thing it does is it checks the SSL cert and it gives you information about it. Um, pretty simple. Um, Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm gonna run through run through some of the tutorial to see if there's anything I didn't need this. Right, so um, look at the functionality. You didn't actually say anything when you invoked Cobra to to implement pull. So this code is is pre done on the website. Oh, that's not what right. you just built. Right. So um, what I just built is just test. Right. So, but if I wanted to, just add pull. So it builds, it puts the license in, and then it, it uh, as the imports it needs, and then it basically does boilerplate. All these tools are basically doing sort of boilerplate, um, boilerplate generation, and then you add your your actual smaller bits of code within that. So um, in this current directory, I just did this at the start of the demo. So I just added the pull command here. Um, and from here, each command is basically a variable. And when it's compiled, um, the library puts everything basically in the right place. So how, does, how well does it work if you generate a bunch of CLI, add a bunch of things to it, and then extend it later? Yeah, so um, basically the generation tool has kind of two simple operations. It's init and add. But if in the future you want to change, like let's say where the commands are nested or subnested. You just, uh, you, it's, yeah, let me show you. No, I mean, like, say you take a framework, you generate, you take a framework, yep. you, you implement all that stuff, and then later you say, oh, I need a new command for you fetch or right. something instead of pull. Yeah. Is that, can you use it to modify it previously? Um, you could go in and rename it, like in the source files. Um, you could just rename the commands if you really wanted to. Um, but there's not like a Cobra rename command. So it's basically Cobra init and Cobra add. Okay. Yeah. So out of the box, it doesn't do it doesn't do as much as the whole Cobra package does, um, as far as like the uh, all the all the things that it provides. It has it has a couple of basic things as far as what it generates. Um, but what it, the value in it is really all the things that it does for you. Um, you have an input YAML file or something, what like? Yeah. So let me go back through. So it has a really basic configuration file. So like if you have a certain license you like, you set this up. Whenever it builds the CLI, it applies the license to the, the source headers and then it, it adds it to the root. So I, I always use MIT pretty much. So. Um, and then you put in your name and it gives you attribution in the files and whatnot. Um, if you don't out of the box, it uses a Apache 2, I think, license. Um, but, yeah. How good is support for library or <coughs> projects? So, like, here it seems to be generating good boilerplate code if you're doing a CLI application. But say right. you want to just do a simple CLI wrapper to a library based project that you, you can add that you you would add those things later basically right, so it doesn't so, really have any 
stuff for that, you'd have to add that yourself. And then yeah, so it, it generates what Cobra knows, and Cobra knows like the nested flag, the POSIX flags, and it knows the helper functions, and it knows that's all it So it's it best knows. for making maybe a CLI wrapper right. for something. And, and things like Kubernetes and Docker, they just use the library, they don't use the code generation tool. All right. That, and then they add, you know, all the imports and things like that yeah. um, into it. It's, um, yeah. So we'll see if uh... yeah, this is just a, a super simple example of pull it using the HTTP client and then pulling down the HTML from the Linux Fest Northwest website. Um, and then you can see um, you can also put, I add it I add it so you can just pipe it to a file. And then, <coughs> as far as an example of like adding a subcommand, so I added info command, and I can show you in a minute the source to that. Um, I added info command to pull, for lack of coming up with a, a better name, and that just gets the certificate information, DNS name, let's encrypt as an organization. Uh, so under pull, how you link them together. Basically, it, there's an init function, and in init, you add the command to whatever the parent is. So you see, see right here, I have root command, add command, pull. So that adds pull to, uh, to the base. And then if I wanted to change it and add it to, say, like, I don't know, uh, uh, info or test or something like that, then I would just change where the um, add command is, and that would, that would rearrange all the code without me having to ed edit anything but that one line. So um, that's maybe speaking to what he was asking about earlier. Um, how, if you want to move your functionality from uh, one subcommand to another and you don't like how they're named or like, you know, whatnot, you can move it really easily. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I want to, this code is available on GitHub. I don't know if I want to go through it line by line because it's like kind of boring, right? So um, that's all I can say about it right now. Does anyone have any other questions? So is, do, is the out for that a stand, for its, uh, standard out? And yeah. So you can use pipe it to something else and do something yeah. else with it? Yeah, I mean, you could start, this could even be a daemon, right? Like, so you could have the CLI be multiple things that you want to do. You could start, you could use this as a base, and then your actual code could be running a daemon if you wanted to. Um, so, but yeah, the default is just standard out. And what do you have to do to actually get the, the Cobra tool itself? To yeah, so um, if you install uh, Visalco, the things I recommend if you want to if you want to play with this stuff, which you should, because there's a lot of cool Go projects, is uh, install the latest Go, install Dep, and um, and then you can just do go get uh, whatever the URL is for Cobra, and that will pull down the source into your Go path, and then you can build it. Actually, it'll build um, it'll build automatically typically. So yeah, so set your set your Go path set you in your path set the actual bin directory of the in your go path and so whenever you build something it'll be in your path Yeah, so um, I don't have a lot else. Anything else? I mean, if nobody else has any questions, you can see you can find it up on GitHub. You can ask me questions on there about it if you want. Um, yeah, if you want to contribute something, contribute ideas. Yep. So you said earlier that the uh, Cobra tool will generate some uh, JavaScript. No. So 
that's a se separate project. So Goa, Goa is a project that does the API generation uh -huh. from a Go-specific DSL. Um, it's, a, it's, it's not Cobra, basically. But it's also a super cool project um, to build uh, REST APIs and clients and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Can you show us that, or is that out of the scope of this discussion? We can we can go to the website and talk about it. I didn't. I don't have. I don't have a lot of examples uh, for it. I'm working on my. Yeah, we can. Uh, Oh yeah. Uh, it's very similar to Go. It generates uh, HTTP handlers mm -hmm. based off like a protobuf definition. Right. And it does like a uses Go kit. Okay, cool. It's like a hybrid transport, so you get the uh, gRPC handlers and the HTTP handlers. Cool. And you just use the Go kit middlewares. What's it called? Trust. Like T R U S S. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, so Go basically will take a design definition like this, and based on this uh, definition, it's just like short, it'll generate all the, the back end parts and the JavaScript client and the CLI tool and the Swagger def uh, definitions and everything like that. So it's like makes it uh, much more rapid. I mean, you can build a set of REST APIs in an hour or two, right? Like if you're proficient with this, and it's all documented and has CLI and like, I mean, some companies spend months building one API, so <laughs> uh, it's a it's a super cool utility. Does it also have connectors to popular databases? So there's po one for Postgres, and there is a plugin. Uh, there's a plugin system. Um, I haven't done much with it, but I know you can write the similar like with Postgres. It'll, it, you, from the DSL, it'll do the back-end uh, data-based design. And it'll map, it'll map to the front-end API stuff. Yeah, I thought it would be really cool to have like a Redis, a Redis cache and then a, as well like an S3 back-end as part of like a plugin that would intelligently, you know, like cache things in Redis and then put things on cheap storage. But just, I'll time to <laughs> do something like that. So yeah, Hugo is, uh, I'll talk about Hugo since I got some time. Talk about the other ones. Are these all diff uh, different maintainers? <laughs> so Cobra and Go are, are different maintainers? Um, Hugo and Cobra Viper are a guy named Steve Francier, works for Google. Um, He's uh, he's got a lot of really cool projects. He does um, he does all three of those. So basically, like this, Hugo is for building static websites. Like a lot of people, especially like projects, they have uh, small needs as far as like backends and things like that. So this is a cool tool for building uh, rapidly building websites. So. In the same vein, you kind of basically you can install it on like with Homebrew or whatnot, or um, install the package on Linux. The same thing, the same sort of simple like code generation happens with that Hugo new site quick start, and then it generates all the the static HTML and things that you don't really want to work on. Well, I don't really want to work on. Um, and then you can add different themes to it. Um, a bunch of cool themes, open source themes, Creative Commons people have put up. But yeah, that's, that's another code generation tool. Uh, gRPC is the Google one.
So basically the same service definition, code generation, uh, client server. Um, works with the, actually gRPC has generated for a bunch of different languages. So if you don't really like Go, if you like Java or you like Ruby or whatever, there's, there's generators for those too. Um, but it's sort of like a, a sort of a faster replacement for a REST API. It's all over uh, HTTP2. Right. So it has a lot of like modern uh, modern architecture to it. Oh, and uh, Go supports HTTP2 out of the box too as well. So that's super cool <laughs> for people that it people that want to use that. Cool. Um, yeah, so um, you should download Go, you should install Go, you should write some software and Go. At least give it a chance. That's, that's the point.